Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and Blender has come a very long way in a relatively short period of time, and some of you may not realize just how much it has changed in that time. What you're looking at right now, this is Blender 2.4, and let's just say, uh, things have changed. Things have definitely changed over time. Uh, there has been a lot of involvement in the way that this has actually worked, leading us from Blender 2.4, to Blender 4.2.1, which is the most current version of Blender as of time of recording. And this uh, is a hell of an evolution. But the thing is, there are still a lot of people out there that bounce off of the Blender user interface. For whatever reasons, it just may not speak to them. And there is a project out there that is designed to make Blender more accessible to artists. First, before we get into that, a quick note from our sponsor. This video is brought to you by Camtasia. It is literally the software I use for every single video from when I started this channel, and there's a reason why I stick around and use it. Stay tuned to the end of this video to find at what those reasons are. All right, so here we go. This is your alternative. It is Blender or B for artists or B as in B-E for artists. It means this is a version of Blender specifically catering towards artists specifically. Now it is actually built on top of Blender. I think this is Blender 4.2.1 underneath it. Uh, so this is just as current as Blender. They generally lag behind by a couple of weeks at most. So new features that come into Blender come into B for artists. But you're gonna notice there are a lot of other things going on here. You're going to notice these very colorful icons. Now, we went from Blender being completely monochromatic to more recent versions have started adding a little bit more color. Uh, but yeah, uh, from the way things started, uh, we've definitely gotten more colorful. But you'll notice when we go into Blender for Artists, there is a ton more color added in. It makes things more represent or recognizable immediately. Uh, and then on top of that, there are a number of changes here. So we're going to go ahead and showcase a couple of them. I'll uh, jack up the resolution in just a minute so you can see. Actually, let's go ahead and do that now. So here, let's go in. Uh, we will go into user interface scaling and we'll make this uh, 1.25. So you can see things a little bit better. So you're going to notice here, uh, we got a variety of colored icons all the way throughout. They've tabbed aligned everything to the left hand side of things. Uh, they've in in added an incredible number of tool tips wherever it made sense, a lot more detail to the particular tool tips where it makes sense. Uh, one thing you'll also notice is they got rid of the default cube, which is blasphemy. So let's go ahead and add that back. And then let me go ahead and kill that. Another thing they've done is completely switched out the keyboard mapping. So it uses a more traditional, like the QWERTY approach to things. I hate that <laughs> with all of my soul. Now the good news is you can actually just turn that off. So if you want, come on back in here, uh, go to your key map preferences uh, and just set it to Blender. And then you can turn the B for Artist stuff off. There's also a specialized version specifically for Mac. Now you may like their keyboard interpretations, but I've gotten used to Blenders. Now Blenders don't necessarily make a lot of sense when you're first starting out. Uh, like for example, uh, when you have something here, G for grab to move it around the scene, that does not make a lot of sense. But once you've got the muscle memory in place for doing that, it makes all kinds of sense. Ditto for X for deleting. Once you get used to it, it is so natural that trying to switch that out is an absolute nightmare. And there's a bunch more going on in top of these colorful icons. A big thing is they've moved to a toolbar approach. So you're going to see over here, uh, context sensitive toolbar. So here we are in object mode right now. Let's add an object back in. So we're in object mode and you can notice dynamically toolbars show up as we switch things. We come down here, a different set of toolbars. These are fully customizable so you can drop down and pick things that you wish to add into or remove from them. Again, everything does have its own tool tips. The other nice thing is everything here is completely documented. Another thing that they have done, and this is actually pretty impressive, go back to object mode, they've created these shelves. So basically, it is a collection of resources that are available. Uh, it's basically like an asset view. Uh, I come down here, I can filter it down to just specific ones. So say I want to have ceramic materials, I'm going to show just ceramic materials, and they're available there for you, uh, pretty much a drag and drop. So there you see our ceramic material came in place. There's also a variety of plugins that have been added in here. By the way, this dock is available in a variety of different options. So come down here, for example, I'll go ahead and do a grease pencil. So let's do a new stroke grease pencil like there. Uh, and go into draw mode of our grease pencil. And you're going to notice you have these things, for example, for ink pen. Uh, we've got things here for eraser. So this object docs is definitely one of the changes they have made here uh, to this version. On top of that, 
Uh, they've gone through and they've cleaned up a number of the menus. So the things that are duplicated across other menus have all been uh, cut down. So you can notice there's a lot less clutter in their menus. Uh, they've got um, mouse controls for everything, uh, but you're going to see a lot of this have actually been preempted by Blender. So now Blender is starting to improve in these areas. So for example, here, I can snap to a front view right here. And I can also do that with this control that was added uh, in, I don't remember exactly which version of Blender. In the last couple of years, they've added this in and then these tools in here as well. So you have these on-screen controls in Blender now that this is kind of like a hacky implementation to fix. So Blender have been sorely, somewhat obsoleting some of the changes that uh, B4Artist set out to fix. So it used to be originally not all uh, movement controls were available in a mouse interface, but now they've started adding that. So it sort of takes away a little bit of what Blend for Artists is all about. So is this going to be for you? Uh, that ultimately comes down to you. Like there are things here I definitely find frustrating. For example, here, they've hidden the uh, editor types for Windows. So if I want to change a window out to another window, uh, that actually, I have to toggle that back on. You can set it and save it, but I don't find their approach particularly intuitive as an example. So this quite simply is a version of Blender set up to cater more towards visually oriented artists. If you are interested in checking it out, it is available at b4artists.de. Uh, they got a bit of an overview of what it's all about. Again, they stay very current. So this version 4.2.2 was just released on uh, the beginning of September. So a couple of days ago. Uh, and then in terms of the main differences between b4artists and Blender are a new default key map, uh, cleaned up user interface. A lot of the double, triple and more menu entries have been combined, removed or exposed. Extended the user interface. So uh, a lot of hotkeys uh, only have a menu entry now. Uh, rearranged user interfaces, uh, colored iconography with silo uh, silhouette, color coding, form and detail consistently placed everywhere. Configurable toolbar with icon buttons, a pinnable tool shelf with header based tools, expose at top level and panels, tabs in the tool shelf, a node add tool shelf for quick point and click, improved default workspace layouts, default align checkboxes and text where possible, indented titles for properties. By the way, this is another thing that Blender has recently been fixing with their own UI. Um, better and more tooltips, better contrast on a readable standard theme, and some extras. And then I actually kind of like some of these extras. For example, here, let's go back to 3D view. One of the things that they've done, and I would actually use this quite often, they've added in this extra over here, view menu, reset view, and it snaps you back to the default view angle. I like that. It's one of those, you know, convenience things that they've added in. They've also set up a number of the, the pie menus that are available for there from that menu. So there are a number of add-ons that they've set up to make quality of life better when working with this. Um, and then lots of smaller detail things going on. You can get a full detail of it, what they added in the release notes. They've also got a, a breakdown of what's new. So you can see where they've clapped some of the menus down. So here you can see in edge UV and then the context menu, there was mark seam, mark seam, mark seam, clear seam, mark seam, clear seam. And all three of those, what they've done is they've moved it so that it is just mark seam and clear seam under UV and everywhere else it's removed from it. So it gets rid of a lot of the duplication, but if you got used to it being in that one particular spot, that can get quite frustrating. So there's a whole breakdown of the, the various different ways that they've done things different from Blender. I'm not sure how incredibly current this is right now, uh, but it, it is, um, there's a lot of little changes they've made. Now, another thing that they do at b for artists that I really appreciate is document. And I mean document. So here we can see the uh, reference manual here for this particular version. You can download it as a single 134 megabyte PDF. Uh, but otherwise you've got a breakdown of all the different uh, viewports, menus, headers, what they do. So if you're in vertex painting, for example, there is one PDF covers all of the tools there. I love this documentation. It makes the tools more accessible. But on the flip side, as I mentioned earlier on, they have their own keyboard map. And here's the documentation for that. So this is the changes that they have made to the keyboard map. And yeah, uh, there's 88 pages here. Uh, so I don't want to learn all new keyboard. But I don't, once I got used to the Blender way of doing things with keyboard, uh, I found it quite useful. Uh, but if you're interested and you're willing to try it out, this is going, this is all here for you. By the way, there's also like this uh, important hotkeys, kind of a summary. 
So you don't have to go through you know, 88 pages of what they've changed. Uh, you've got all the important hotkeys here in this quick start. So if you're coming at Blender and you tried using it in the user interface, you hated it or you hated the keyboard, key maps, whatever, you could check this out and just do be aware that all of the, uh, the options are here. Because you see it uses the standard uh, industry standard, so Max and Maya approach of W, E, and R for move, rotate, and scale, etc. But you got a quick breakdown of the actual hotkeys that are used in this. So that is B for artist. Again, it is a re, it's not just a theme, it's much more than that. It's an actual port of Blender with a number of changes on top to make it more accessible to artists. Now again, it's gonna be polarizing which one you prefer. So some of you will definitely like this. I, I, from an aesthetics point of view, I like that they've added pops of color, uh, but I find this more aesthetically pleasing uh, than, than this to a degree, especially when we get into uh, the toolbars. I find the toolbars kind of ugly and I've gotten used to them, but I can understand how people would definitely prefer the B for artist approach. But I think we can all agree, both of these programs are a massive step forward from the way things used to be. Although I know there are a few people out there that just, they pine for the days of Blender 2.4. I think those people are mad, but they definitely still do exist. Now, a quick word from this video sponsor, and that is Camtasia. When I first started Game From Scratch, this was one of the earliest decisions I've made, and I have never regretted it. When it comes to making tutorial-type content, it is the easiest tool out there. But for making videos exactly like what we've got here, news videos oriented around screen stuff, I don't need super advanced effects or anything like that. I need to capture me, uh, capture my voice, capture my screen, optionally capture my camera, but thankfully for all of you, I don't show up on camera, which is a good thing. And it's got the recorder built in, so you can see me right now records all of it down and then you've got this easy editing environment you can see this video we're currently working on right now kind of an inception moment is in it so this is a super easy super fast rendering video solution if you're looking to get into doing tutorials uh video editing, etc. It's definitely one worth checking out. Check out the link down below. Uh, there is a discount code available as well, and they have a full functioning uh, watermarked version. If you want to check out all of its capabilities, you can do that. So thank you, Camtasia. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Let me know what you think of B for Artists. Are you tempted by it? Is it anything there for you? Or are you going to stick with Blender as it is? Or are you just pure on in the Max and Maya camp? Let me know. Comments down below. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.